Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, October 16th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from McLean, Virginia. Today, Abdul Rahman Al Kamandi did publish a proof of concept exploit for one particular vulnerability that Microsoft patched last week. This is actually one of those vulnerabilities that didn't really get a lot of attention because it was one of many issues in Microsoft Edge that was patched. And the vulnerability was described as an insufficient UI warning. Now, what is really referred to was that with custom URL schemes, you can launch external programs and load arbitrary scripts that are already present on the machine. And in this particular case, the author of this proof of concept exploit was actually able to use an existing script on the system that is vulnerable to Windows shell injection to then leverage this flaw in Microsoft Edge. So not a real straightforward exploit, but once you see it working, not really all that difficult to actually get to work with not too much user interaction, so you can properly make this work relatively reliable. As so often, once you chain a number of vulnerabilities that by themselves don't really look all that severe together, you can like in this case, have full remote code execution. So again, this vulnerability was patched last week. So better get going and make sure that all your systems are up to date. And well, even though a lot of the hype that has in the past engulfed cryptocurrencies has somewhat subsided, there's still plenty of new scams showing up that take advantage of users who are interested in cryptocurrencies. The latest is a set of Android applications that claim to mine various cryptocurrencies, but don't actually do so. And some of the cryptocurrencies that they they are claiming to mine actually are not really mineable, like for example, Tether or Ripple. Now, not that it's ever really a good idea to use mobile devices to mine cryptocurrencies, but in this case, it appears that the actual goal is for the author of these applications to deliver adware to the mobile device. And the cryptocurrency mining is really just used sort of as a pretense to trick the user into installing the application. So this is not one of those applications that mine crypto coins in the background without the user realizing that's what's happening. It's sort of the opposite of it, where the user actually downloads the application to mine crypto coins, but then something else, like in this case, adware is actually happening. And talking about applications that do something else than they're saying they're doing in Microsoft's App Store in the Windows Store, there is an application that claims to be affiliated with Google. The pub publisher calls itself Google LLC, and the application uses a lot of the design cues from Google, like the color scheme and such, and claims to be album by Google Photos. But instead of really being an album that allows you to manage your Google Photos, this application just asks you to click on ads in order to support the application. Of course, the publisher of the application gets paid for each ad click. Now, Google itself does publish as Google Inc., Google Incorporated, not as Google LLC. And while it took a while, the application has now been removed from the Windows Store. And then I got a public service announcement for everybody coding in PHP. With the end of the year, there will be no more support for PHP 5, with the latest version being PHP 5.6. So there will be no more security patches. Problem, well, uh, not too many sites actually upgraded to PHP 7. There is no PHP 6, so you have to go from 5 to 7. In this case, 7.2 is the current official version of PHP. 
PHP 7.0 will lose all security support starting December 3rd, 2018. So go right away to 7.2. If you're still running 7.1, then you have till the end of next year, December 1st, 2019, in order to still receive security updates. Typically the updates like within minor versions from 7.0, 7.1 to 7.2 are not really that big of a deal. There can be some issues, but the update from 5.6 to 7 is not that straightforward. That's probably why a lot of people still are holding back on it. But time to get going on your migration plan and to upgrade to PHP 7.2 soon. And well, that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.